We'll call the regular meeting of the 18th Common Council to order. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Laux? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Warner? Here. 15 present. Forums present. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the minutes of the last Common Council meeting be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. Second. We have a motion and a second before us that the minutes of the previous Council meeting be approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Perez, would you lead us in a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Very awesome. Thank you. All right, we have the aldermatic candidates this evening, and uh, they will have five to eight minutes for speaking, correct? Correct. Excuse me. So, sure. We want to Terry Cott will be our first speaker. Terry, could you give me your home address, please? Uh, 625 Fairway Drive, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Fairway. And you will have five to eight minutes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, my name is Terry Koth. Now, I've been actively seeking this seat for over one year. It, it is indeed re regrettable uh, that this uh, is resumed under such tragic circumstances. I was looking forward to next year to run against Bob. I have walked the whole district talking to any voter who will listen. Now my being seated is in your hands and I, I ask you for that support. I'd like to read my bio just in case some of you don't know me or who followed the last campaign. I'm married to wife Marlene. We have four children and two grandchildren. I'm a lifelong resident of Sheboygan. I graduated from local schools. I received a Bachelor of Degree of Science from uh, Business Administration from Lakeland College. I've been self-employed in the fields of business, consultation, real estate, and construction. I've been employed by several Sheboygan employers, completing 20 years at the Sea Rice Coal Company until they closed and retiring from the Sheboygan Glass Company. In April 1961, I was elected to the Sheboygan Council. I uh, beat Bern, uh, Mr. Kleinke, 35-year veteran. Uh, uh, very unhappy man. Uh, I was re-elected uh, two years later and again elected April 1997 to take the seat of James R. Schramm, who had been elected there. Uh, I was elected to a single three-year term to the Sheboygan Area School District. I had at that time an agenda. It was implemented, it was implemented, believe it or not and I was allowed to move on. I'm a Korean War era veteran serving overseas in Germany. I'm a long time volunteer and activist for programs for children with special needs. I was in the early Opportunity Center Board of Directors which became RCS and a long time president of the Sheboygan County Association for Children with Learning Disabilities. I was De deeply honored with a life membership in the Sheboygan Theater Company for 40 years of service. There are very few of those, as many of you may know. It's a great honor. I, I was cast in the 1950s 
in the first musical put on by the Sheboygan Theater Company of the Icing. And there's been many, many stage crews, many, many casts, and uh, many, many committees, a lot of committee work since. I'm a charter member of the local chapter of the National Association of Accountants. I've held many offices in the local Sheboygan Taxpayer Association. I'm not quite sure that even exists anymore, but for a very long time we would sit up here and with the whole council go over the budget line for line for line. Now that's all gone by the boards with the mayor's budget and all kinds of other good things that are happening. As a Sheboygan JC, I co-produced and directed their first indoor Miss Sheboygan pageant. It doesn't sound like much, but we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, believe it or not, in scholarship. And we had never put it indoors before because there was a Bratwurst Day and it was outdoors. And I was the instrumental and the leader in the revival of Bratwurst Day. Oh, too bad. I, that's a vote against him. Uh, it was called German Days. And I was the producer director of that for the Sheboygan JCs. It was very, very successful the very first year, and it's grown ever since. I served on the Council of the First United Lutheran Church, I've been a very active member in groups and committees. Now, I'm not sure uh, if there's specific, can, can we ask, is there questions, or that's not Just, applicable? No. So that's me. I'm uh, here because I love to give. I participated in affairs of the city all my life, and uh, I enjoyed the last contest. I never knocked on so many doors before because it was hard to keep abreast of Mr. Peterson. He rapped on doors. I kept running across him, and that's really sad. It's sad. Thank you, Terry. Okay. Scott Lewandowski? Lewandowski. Scott, could I have your address, please? It's 2201 Erie Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Thank you. You'll have Do you need the apartment number? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. My name is Scott Lewandowski, and I've been a lifelong resident of Sheboygan, and I've been involved with some of the different groups in the Sheboygan area. Uh, right now, I'm a volunteer for the Sheboygan County Museum, so I've been spending time there for their holiday memories programs. I've also worked with the museum with the education program that they have for the different school districts in the Sheboygan County. I'm also a volunteer at St. Nicholas Hospital, and I'm a volunteer for Partners for Community Development. And in all of those positions as a volunteer, I have met many people of Sheboygan and also of the minority groups in Sheboygan, so I feel that I'm qualified to work with all of them. A little background on me also is that I attended local schools in Sheboygan. I graduated from North High School I attended the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan for two years, got an Associate of Arts degree there, and then I transferred out to Lakeland where I received a Bachelor of Arts degree out there. Um, my major was elementary education. I am a substitute teacher for the Sheboygan schools. And my minor was U.S. history. And since that time, I've gotten very interested in the history of Sheboygan and would like to be a part of that history. Last year I had a book published by the Research Center in Sheboygan Falls where I'm also a volunteer on Charles Bourne and Bourne's Park which used to be in Sheboygan. And Charles Bourne was an important man also because he was a second police chief in Sheboygan. He was an alderman quite a few terms and he was a four-time mayor of Sheboygan and he was also a colonel in the National Guard 
which got federalized, so he saw action in Puerto Rico during the Spanish-American War while he was still mayor. Uh, another thing that I would like to add is that I'm not running for the election in April. I just want to have a chance to serve on the Common Council and see what it's like in case I would like to do it again in the future, get some experience for now. And I feel with if I would get chosen to serve for the three and a half months, the two candidates who are running for the aldermanic position would uh, be running on equal terms with nobody having an advantage of already being in office for a few months. That's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Jean Kittleson. Jean, can I get your home address, please? 1716 Illinois Avenue. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, Mayor Schramm, ladies and gentlemen of the council and all others present here this evening, thank you for giving me the chance to introduce myself to you this evening, especially for those of you who don't know me, and to thank you for the opportunity to ask for your vote to be appointed to the vacant council seat that presently exists in the 3rd District, 5th Ward of the City of Sheboygan. My name is Jean Kittleson, and I reside at 1716 Illinois Avenue. I've lived at that address along with my husband, John, for almost 37 years. I am a wife, mother of two grown sons, both married, and the grandmother of five. And three of those five grandchildren are being raised right here in our city. I'm currently employed full-time at Yonkers Department Store right here in our downtown area. And I meet and interact with many citizens of our community every day. Uh, giving excellent customer service is a goal I strive for each and every day. Greeting and serving the public, which I do at the store on a daily basis, is a job I truly enjoy. I've been affiliated with and have volunteered for several organizations in our city. I've worked on campaigns for the Sheboygan Area United Way, both as chairperson and committee member as well. And I also divide my time and give service to the Sheboygan Theater Company, University Theater, and the Weill Center for the Performing Arts, where I currently serve as the hospitality manager. Um, it is there that I worked very closely with Bob Peterson, uh, preparing for many shows that have graced the stage of this beautiful facility we have in our city. I'm also a member of the John Michael Kohler Art Center and currently serving as a committee member of the Mayor's Special International Committee. For those who, of you who don't know what we are, we are a group of citizens who ensure that our relationships with our sister cities in Esslingen, in Germany and Tsubami, Japan are fostered. And our hospitality also extends to any visitors to our city who come from abroad, as well as foreign exchange students who attend our Sheboygan area schools. As I said, my husband and I have lived and worked and raised our family here in the city of Sheboygan, and our city has been very good to us. Through the years, we've seen many, many changes and improvements, and I know more are yet to come. I think exciting times are ahead of us. I've always had an interest in city government, and the time has come in my life where I feel it is my turn to give something back to the community which has given me and my family so much. What I do have to offer you is a good, strong work ethic, along with honesty and integrity. I have a lot of positive energy and enthusiasm for plans and projects I truly believe in. And I will always be a cheerleader for the wonderful things our city has to offer. And last but not least, I would offer an open, objective, listening ear to the citizens who I would be representing listening to their comments, uh, concerns, criticisms, and complaints would be of utmost importance to me. Um, it would indeed be an honor and a privilege to serve with all of you, our city leaders, whose job, among other things I'm certain, is to work to keep Sheboygan, the great city it is to live in, not only for today, but for generations to come. Thank you so much for listening, and I thank you for your support. Thank you, Jane. Your Honor. Can I ask a question, please? Pardon? May I ask a question? You can. Nobody has it. You can. If I could, please? Sure. Jean, could I ask you a question, please? Sure. Um, you state that you work full-time at Yonkers. I had also worked part-time for many years in retail. Mm -hmm. I know what scheduling is like. Yes. And I know how it affects uh, 
things on a daily basis, especially things that's meetings, such as meetings, common mm -hmm. council meetings, committee meetings, etc. Would your job interfere with or could you work around uh, so that you could attend the council meetings and any or committee meeting? I could most definitely work around that. Okay. Very, very much so. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Election for Alder person, Alderman Warner. <clears throat> well, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that the following names be placed in nomination for the position of third district alder person. Terry Koth, Jean Kittleson, and Scott Lewandowski. Voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. We have a motion and a second before us. On that, Your Honor, I'd move to close the nominations. First, we'll take a vote on a procedure. Is there any discussion on a procedure? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried now. On that, I would move the nominations be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second before us. Nomination be closed under discussion. Hearing none, is there any other nominees? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Um, we have Scott uh, Lewandowski, zero, Terry Koth, one vote, and Jean Kittleson, 14. Okay, congratulations. Mm -hmm. 
You can? Jeannie, you're more than welcome then to come on up and sit in the chair. In your chair. <laughs> Before we get into the public forum, I would like to make a few comments and there are a few aldermen who want to make a few comments and then we'll get into the public forum, so bear with me. As our process of building a new police station continues, the importance of, of staying the course towards our goal of providing our residents with a safe community they deserve and our, and our police officers the resources they need remains the number one goal. The debate is about public safety and the emphasis, emphasis we put, we choose to place upon it. I am certain about the efforts, I am concerned about the efforts of a few people to cloud the issue and only further delay the police station from being built. One, which we already have spent over 80 meetings discussing and reviewing 49 potential site locations. To suggest that I have not been forthright with efforts of those opposed to the Sheridan Park site is nothing more than election year politics and an insult to those who place a value on the safety of our community. All of you learned of Mr. Moose's efforts by, via a letter last weekend which he sent directly to you. I was never asked to be part of Mr. Moose's meetings nor asked to be present or asked to present any information to this council. The only city officials who attended these meetings were some of the aldermen here tonight. Mr. Muth or Mr. Grover or anyone else has information to present to this council, then I welcome their attendance to do so. I value the input of citizens such as Mr. Muth and Mr. Grover and I appreciate the dialogue with all of our media outlets on this important issue. In the end though, it is my job as mayor to choose a course that is best for our city. So, we are back to the issue of public safety. Do we stand with our police officers and stand up for the safety of our residents? Do we value the safety of our children, neighborhoods and parks? Our consulting firm has a proven track record and informed us that the shared services we desire can be incorporated into the site chosen. I am committed to share services as a concept that can save our taxpayers hard earned dollars. This project is a good first step in that direction. The time for action, for courage, and for the wisdom to lead is here. Rather than standing in a way Let's stand up for a safer Sheboygan. Thank you. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Your Honor. There are two issues that I would like to discuss in reference to the press editorial dated 12 1904. Number one is the Blue Harbor legal fees. When the issue of the Blue Harbor fees was out in the open, the press felt the group was beating a dead horse because after the initial complaint that was filed by me, and it was ruled there was no wrongdoing, the group took further steps but to no avail. This issue is now dead, and now look who is beating a dead horse, the Sheboygan Press. The mayor, city attorney, and the council do not need to be reminded of the issue. I am sure they all remember it well, as do I. Number two, the group formed by the area businessmen. The mayor did not need to share the information about this group because, first of all, there was really no information to share. It was all talk. We on the council knew of this group, as all the person Montemayor stated, she knew this group also had been formed. I was aware of the group because when all the person Bob Peterson, and may I add, God rest his dear soul, called me to say that the person from American Orthodontics was part of a group who were opposed to the Sheridan Park site, called him. He stated he had property he would donate to the city for a police site, and if I remember correctly, it was on Penn Avenue, and a site that would have been contaminated because it had been a dump site. This man also stated that if we voted for Sheridan Park, he would pull his money from the city. 
I told Alder Person Peterson that he could tell this man that I would not be blackmailed into changing my vote. This was an editorial that made me think twice as to who was not telling the truth to the people of Sheboygan, the press or this group. For the letter the council received from Mr. Muth stated he wanted to make it perfectly clear it was not about the police site, but about shared services. Facts about shared services and not just words would be welcomed. My vote still stands with Sheridan Park site and shared service is a whole different issue. Maybe the press should be more concerned with the facts instead of political campaigning. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to publicly comment on some inaccuracies which were printed in the Sheboygan Press Sunday by the editor in his editorial titled, Mayor Needs to Share Information with Council and Public. First, the article states that in addition to the citizenry support in opposing the Sher Sheridan Park location, we now have, I quote, added to the staunch opposition, business leaders Michael Muth and Bruce Grover, unquote. Yet on Friday, December 17th, I received in writing an official statement regarding Mr. Muth's and Mr. Grover's position on the location of a police station. It reads as follows, quote, let us be perfectly clear. Our group is not about site selection. Our focus is shared services, unquote. <coughs> And both the, if both these statements are true, there seems to be a contradiction on behalf of Mr. Muth's and Mr. Grover's true intentions. Secondly, the press reports that the city had a handshake deal with the county concerning the future police station contingent upon a land swap. It furthers charges that only after we got the opinion from the League of Municipalities did I quote, the mayor and the council do an about face and walk away from its deal with the county, end quote. I take exception to the press implying that I, a council member, made such a deal. Further, I would like to know when I supposedly sealed this agreement with a handshake. If you will recall, when I made the, my decision for Sheridan Park, I even questioned when did this become an issue versus relationship with the county. Finally, to address the issue of the press claiming that the mayor has, quote, kept the information to himself and selected members of the council, end quote, I, as a member of the council, did not learn about Mr. Muth's particular inquiry until the press released this information in an article dated on December 11th of 2004. To verify my claim and the actions of the mayor to sharing any concrete knowledge in relation to this topic, even Mr. Muth and Mr. Grover apologized in their written statement, which I received on Friday, quoting, that you may have learned about our group via the newspaper. At that time of the at the time of the story, we were not prepared to inform you on our group's intentions. We had not made the decision to conduct the study because we didn't have a clearly defined study scope or a cost estimate. We expect to have this information later this week. End quote. It is therefore apparent that Mr. Muth and Mr. Grover were not prepared until this evening to make a clear and official statement. Until this information is made public, the council cannot take any action. In closing, I question where the press got their impression that the mayor is not sharing information with the aldermen. If there are aldermen here who feel there is a better process to, in which to convey information, I would hope you would explore a more dignified and professional manner in reaching a conducive solution, not a means through editorial commentary. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Berg, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. I also got that letter from Mr. Muth, and I was glad to see that that group were not involved with the site location, shared services. The next day, I'm looking over that letter again, and I get a phone call from a local businessman who I don't know if he's in that group, but he was arguing with me back and forth, and before I could explain what I was doing and why I was doing it, he blurts out, I'm, I'm an a-hole, and then hangs up on me. Now, if this is the way they're going to start treating us, calling us names, they better change their attitude a little bit. But I'm all for sharing services, which I said from day one. And the Sheboygan Press, if they would put some time and effort into running a good newspaper instead of trying to run the city and corking their thoughts down to 
taxpayer's throat, I think they would be better off in a better newspaper. Thank you. Alderman Warner? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I didn't really prepare anything for this, but I guess I concur with my colleagues that have spoken thus far. I think when I read that editorial, I was disturbed largely by the inaccuracies in it. I think that that's just not something you should put in there. Uh, if you can't be accurate, then leave it out. If you want to put your opinion in there, that's one thing. But to put things out there that are inaccurate and try to put them up there as being factual really bothered me a lot, especially when it came to the Sheboygan County site issue along with the Sheridan Park site issue because our building use committee did address that. And right here is the letter that we sent to the county after we had a tentative agreement with them. As you recall, in our negotiations with the county, and this is to their attorney, Carl Beesing, as you recall, in our negotiations with the county, the committee, committee tentatively agreed to the access easement, subject to review and determination that the overall site layout with the easement will meet the city's building requirements. We were to send this, their site layout plan to the Kimi, who spent, you was paid $35,000 to do an accurate study for the city. I might remind you. And they came back to us and said, no, you need the full four acre site. Get back down with the county, sit down and talk to them. The county's response, I believe that the position of the county in this matter has been clear from the outset that an easement to the west one half of the south 30 feet of the four acre parcel was non-negotiable. The county has gone to great lengths to help the city re solve its police station siting problem from offering the site to the east of the county law enforcement building, offering it to us. You know what offering is? It's when they give it to you. To agreeing to the relocation of the highway department shed, which we were required to pay for its replacement costs. To agreeing to the city's proposal to accept the city's underutilized parking lot as partial payment for the highway department parcel. Underutilized, that lot is fully rented. A $326,000 lot fully rented. To agreeing to forego an easement on the east one half of the 30 feet parcel. What you are now asking is for the county to create a problem for itself in order to solve the city's problems. Their words, not mine. At this juncture, the executive and transportation committees will be submitting a resolution to the May 2004 county board meeting to offer the site to the city based on the terms negotiated with city representatives on March 29th. So they were doing it without even talking to us again. So I've heard enough of that, and the press ought to start getting that right in my mind. I'm sick of hearing them twist the facts on that one. That really bothers me. Uh, as far as the friends, I'm glad to hear that they're not opposed to site selection. I'm glad to hear that they support the site we've chosen, and I'm glad to hear that their main thrust is to look at shared services, and we are looking at it in the present site, and we will always look at shared services. And when they're in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan, it will have my full support. And I do applaud my colleagues for standing up and saying something that perhaps would not have been said. And I don't know, Chief Kirk, I talked to you today, if you had something you wanted to add on this? First, I'd like to apologize. I haven't uh, been to a meeting without a, a suit and tie on for many, many years, and I apologize to uh, Bob Weiss because uh, he's also on vacation, and he wore a suit and tie, which I, <laughs> which often I require. Uh, but as I was on vacation today and spent the last six hours of my vacation day either in my office or preparing for tonight, I thought I'm not going home and putting a tie on. I'm sorry. So I apologize for that. Uh, second off. It's, it's very interesting because I did meet with four members of this business uh, committee. Uh, I've met with Mr. Mike Muth, Mr. Dick Bemis, Lana Stair, and Dan Merkel on Thursday, uh, the 16th of uh, this year. Uh, first off, uh, we began, um, and Mr. Muth addressed the letter. He, he faxed me this letter, and I thanked him for making sure that the mayor and the alderman received a copy of this letter. We first talked about shared services. I, I want to give the proper respect to these people because they are our business leaders in our community. They uh, chose to get involved in this. They are willing to put their money where their mouth is and say, Chief, we like to look at this. As we began to talk about this topic, I, I first off felt initially offended in the sense that uh, they wish to fund a study on shared services, yet 
they haven't talked to me or a member of my department about what services we do share. So as we began to talk about what services we do share, I wish just to touch on these, if I could, Mr. Mayor, as to some of the uh, shared services so we understand what we share before we need to investigate further. We share daily information on daily investigations. We have a monthly chief's meeting with the sheriff and the police chiefs of this county. This uh, monthly meeting began when I became a chief because we want input on our decisions as to what we do as law enforcement uh, agencies in our county. We used to use their, uh, criminal, or their criminal investigator for the computer investigations because he was the expert at that time. We do their internal investigations, they do ours. We do their uh, internal investigations and criminal investigations when needed. We assist with mutual aid and investigations inside and outside of this, this city and county. We use a joint radio and electronics technician for the operation and upkeep on the radios and equipment, computers. We have a joint crime uh, software which ties our records together. That began under Sheriff Koenig when I offered to them to come on board. And I recall, Mayor, when we addressed this at one of the meetings, you said, Chief, what does it do for us? It'll do nothing for us for about two to three years. And we are at two to three years, and it's doing tremendous uh, efforts for our, our joint records and uh, working together. We have a city county mugshot imaging system that goes along with this crime software package, which means any time there's a mugshot taken in the, in the city county, they all come to one, one area. We received a federal grant to DCC communicator which is an emergency notifier that we share with the county. We share their range, they share our range, outside range. We are now currently working on a joint impound and evidence storage area on the old grass clipping spot, which is probably a joint effort that began with Tom Holton. Our detective equipment is shared. We do the uh, crime scene reconstruction. We make models for, for the courts. They have a, a 360 degree camera where they set inside of a crime scene and they shoot 360 degree photographs, which I would love to have, but if they have it, we use it. We asked them and they've come on to our bicycle and car auction at one time. Probably the best shared service we have now is the MEG unit. Funding for the MEG unit is beginning to decrease. In 2006, we can anticipate between 50 to 60 percent reduction in the federal and state funding for this combined unit. We have now created a combined city-county grant writing team, which was our concern, and we went to the county to make sure that they got on board with us. SWAT team, ERT team, we, we share. Dive team, we used to be 10 members on the county, 10 members on the city. We now have five from the city, five in the county. K-9 unit, Officer Edson is our K-9 handler. We share that service with the county. The county is now talking about a, a K-9 officer, which in fact will be shared with our, our city. A vehicle repeater system, it's, it's uh, Mobex, which means uh, with the 800 megahertz system, the radio system, which we went joint several years back, inside of a large structure, we can't get our radio communications to the headquarters, so you had to get a vehicle rep a repeater system which gets the repeater to that location so the officers can talk safely uh, to headquarters. That's been offered with, to the county. As we went on and I first explained to them, please, you need to understand what we share before you offer to, to study what we should share. We talked then of, of what we do share and I then, once again, I think it's fantastic that they have come to the board to offer their, their financial input into some of the concerns that they have, but they need to sit down and we need to sit down and tell you because I don't think we share enough with you what we do on a regular basis. We then talked about what they talked, they're proposing a study to identify the best practices for sharing services. There's only a handful of the aldermen in this, in this room at the present time that understand that I was in North Carolina last week, talked about best practices in the nation in law enforcement and the criminal justice system. I was the only police chief selected from the state of Wisconsin, went down there with Senator Zine, Keith Finley from the UW Law School and Project Innocence, Avery Task Force, with Marla Steffens, the public defender uh, for the state of Wisconsin, uh, Mr. Hammond, who's from the Department of Justice, and that meeting 
on a national basis was to talk about best practices in law enforcement and the criminal justice system. We talk about pr best practices, and my, my officers, my administration deal constantly with best practices, and there's a lot of best practices we would love, but there's also a reality to, to our budget and to law enforcement within the city. We had to reduce our budget last year, this year. Best practices currently for the last many years say we should have video recorders and squad cars. I've told them that. We have 15 Merck squad cars. We got one video recorder. Best practices in the state of Wisconsin says we should have tasers. We are currently uh, being offered some assistance in that, but at the present time, we received one-tenth of what the budgeted amount that we asked from for the budget. Also, best practices currently coming out of North Carolina and this federal uh, approach to the criminal justice system says that we should audio tape and or videotape all of the criminal investigations. I'm not sure where the money's coming from. So as they offer to look at best services, I applaud them for those efforts, but understand what the reality of current policing is. There is not money for many of these best practices. Doesn't mean yet we don't have to discuss them and look at them because I go around the state in different agencies or different committees I sit on to talk of best practices. I speak to the new chiefs of police training session on a yearly basis about best practices, how to survive your position as a police chief. And I'm telling you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Common Council, you provided me some great funding, yet at the same time, best practices, we have not comply with many of the best practices right now, but we're doing what the best we can. So as we talked about this, uh, Mr. Muth, uh, we talked about liability. And I, I, I don't need to defend any of these people, nor do I need to uh, speak for them, but I will speak, and, and they asked me if I would speak in support of a joint effort to study this. I said, certainly, if, if this is on shared services, please understand what we do. Please talk to Sheriff what, what we do together, and then let's study this as to what the best services are, what we can share, and what we can't. They initially said we should look at the efficiency, uh, reduce costs, and there's six different evaluation measures we should look at. It should be the efficiency. If we're going to consolidate or shared services, it should uh, become more effective, more efficient. It should save the city and or county money. It should be a better service and or the same service for a reduced price. It should also deal with, heart, with uh, accountability. If we're going to share services, we have to hold those accountable to what we're, we're sharing so that we do receive the suggested product. And we also have to deal with harmony. Is it going to create harmony or disharmony within the organization? Because if it creates disharmony, you will not get the intended results. So as we're speaking, we talked about liability that currently exists in our current structure. Um, Lana Stair uh, indicates that we should build immediately. Uh, this is not about site selection. This is not, it's about shared service. It's not about, about site selection and chief. We should build immediately. We are not stopping your construction of this police department. Mr. Muth, uh, shortly right after that, it says, Chief, I agree we should build immediately. And I'm telling you, we do not oppose the current site. I asked him, I said, this letter that you authored with Mr. Grover, I thank you for sending it. Mr. Muth wanted to make it clear that this is a consensus opinion letter from those people who sit on the informal group. I have no reason to doubt what I was told that day, and I'm not sure who sits on this informal business group other than the four members I spoke to that day. I applaud them for studying shared services. As I said, I was initially offended because we take great pride sitting with the county <clears throat> sheriff and the other chiefs I sat nationally on a panel to discuss best practices. So we do take our job serious, and if they are willing to provide a study that addresses shared services, not site selection as they indicated, because they said, <coughs> as Mr. Mr. Muth said, Chief, you must build immediately. We no longer oppose the current site that you have picked. So this is what I've been told, and uh, this is basically <coughs> what I wanted to say. Thank you.
can go on to public forum if we, if we would like. The mayor just had to step out for a second. Um, the first one on public forum is Mr. Frank Coxen. <clears throat> Mr. Coxan, again, could you give me your home address? Certainly. <clears throat> 2829 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. First address the uh, council on November 1st regarding the uh, Chardon Park site as a potential landfill. Uh, next was December 6th, two weeks ago, that the landfill is very likely to contain some serious contaminants. I related some of my conversations with uh, expert professional opinion people from the DNR here locally in Plymouth and uh, in Milwaukee and with a professional in uh, at the Alpha Terra company which does soil tectonics they call it testing and at that time I spent a lot of time talking about vapor probes I didn't get a chance to make my point because time ran out I'd like to continue with that the reason I focused on vapor probes to detect the presence of methane, particularly high levels of methane, was it would avoid serious, revealing more serious problems. Soil borings will have to be done. No engineer worth his salt would design foundations without knowing what those foundations are going to rest on. And when I talked with Ken Ebbett at Alpha Terra, he said, you're going to pull up a four-inch core. And there are different procedures. You might sample every two feet. You might sample, oh, he gave me a range of things. But he said, that will reveal what's in there. You cannot not do soil borings. And when those soil borings bring up contaminated material, and I'm confident that they will, the development will stop. You will have to apply for an exemption, and that exemption will depend on an investigation. When I talked with Nancy Ryan, she said, the best case scenario is the borings reveal benign materials. Worst case scenario is you will have to remove everything. Intermediate, put an appropriate cap on it. What's an appropriate cap? couple of feet of clay sounds relatively expensive to me. One of the things that she said is she was surprised that the council was not exercising, and this is a phrase our city attorney will recognize, due diligence. Because there is the potential to expose the city to significant liabilities. This is not, Mayor Schramm, an issue of safety. <sighs> If these materials are found, the city cannot say, well, we reconsider. Let's just put everything back the way it is and let's go someplace else. The toothpaste is out of the tube, to use a phrase from a decade or two ago. When they find contaminated materials, they will say to the city, you must address this problem whether you build the police station there or not. You don't have a choice. And if you don't pay heed to this, and there is a simple procedure, do the vapor probe testing. Would you allow an independent group to fund vapor probe testing if you don't want to spend the money yourself? Because there is $10,000 available in the Kimi report budget for soils testing. This would reveal the first step if indeed there is methane and at high levels. At high levels, it causes explosive conditions within a constructor unless it's vented. <sighs> Would you be willing to listen to an official from the DNR explain the ramifications of this decision to you? Would you be willing to do the research to find out if at the turn of the century there were permits to these companies, if there were resolutions to find out that yes indeed the city said, you know, we want that to be a flat terrace It'll be expensive to do it, but if we invite these companies to put that fill there, we don't have to use the manpower, we don't have to use the equipment, we don't have to find the materials. 
they'll be glad to put it there. And the kind of materials from the furniture companies, from the brewery, and worst of all, the tannery. Because I got a book called Practical Leather Technology from the library, and I have studied this, and the materials are nasty, especially the chromium. And they don't recover the chromium from the process. It shows up in the sludges, and those sludges are what are dumped. Excuse me, Mr. Coxman. The five minutes are up. I'm sure. sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next speaker is John Berner. John, could you give me your home address again, please? Sure, 1919 Broadway. Good evening, everybody. Boy, you hit on everything I was going to talk about tonight. The press, the guy sitting there with the earplugs in. Hi. <laughs> uh, hey. Yes, the press. You know, I, I read the articles. I, I don't buy the press, but I read them while I'm getting gas or something. And then I saw this, this last editorial, and you know, everything you say is there is no shared revenue. Uh, and it's like you don't even come to these common council meetings. You're listening to me. You can write this down if you want. It's, you don't be bashful. Uh, I like a smile. <laughs> And another thing is, is when the press uh, had the article on uh, Park site, and you people said, recall these people, recall. You know what? Maybe they're right. You know, not the press. Maybe these people that voted for the park was right. Did you ever look at the city map? You know, where the central of the city is now on 14th Street? No, it's not in that paper. I, sh I passed it around a couple weeks. You know, it's like any other business. Uh, the press did it. You, you say that the <coughs> extra money isn't going to cost the taxpayers that much, but yet I saw the press move to Fond du Lac. That was a business decision. Uh, Mr. Moose, he built out in the township. He still has a building in the city. And uh, Mr. Grover, he has uh, vinyl plastics, but it really has never expanded in Sheboygan in the last 10 years. They are businessmen. They've got to be good at it because they make money. But they don't live in the city. Their houses are not in the city. Their, bus their businesses are in the city. They pay taxes. The business pays taxes. The businesses do. Me as a resident, I pay, a, I pay taxes to the city like many others. I don't get a high income like a lot of, you know, just like the average Joe, we don't make the big bucks. So every dime is important to us. So 14th Street, if these people would consolidate their funds, buy the next block over, rip it down, say here, build a police station on that, there's the park. But you know what? This man here says there's contamination there. So whether you took the next block or the other block, because I'm certain they didn't take one little space and dump in it and said, that's the park. It had been that whole area. And people have dug in it, right? They got basements. Ah. Uh, geez, I was going to say so much, and you guys just got cheap. You're doing good. <laughs> you know? But uh, shared, shared services, you, your press just doesn't, you just blank that out when you put in an editorial. It's like there isn't going to be any shared service unless we go to 23rd Street. I don't know where you get that from. I mean, I just watch these meetings and I can pick it up and I, I'm no scholar, just a common ordinary person. You're educated. You should be able to pick that up just like that. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, next would be Eric Itson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I worked for 10 hours today. I got time to go home and change. <laughs> Eric, could you give me your home address, please? 30. 
3612 Rosewood Court. And you will have five minutes. Honorable Mayor Schramm and members of the council, I feel like I should begin my comments tonight borrowing from Alderman Berg by stating, here we go again. Another group of people, this time operating under the heading of concerned business leaders, is seeking to undermine the authority of this council to conduct the affairs of the citizens. According to information in the Sheboygan Press, which I'll comment on later, it would appear that this group doesn't believe that the council has spent enough time debating, nor do they apparently think that the council members are intelligent enough to make the final decision regarding the location for a new police department. If that were true, it would really demean the effort and dedication of the aldermen and other professionals that were involved in over 80 meetings studying 49 sites. And while I commend this latest group of individuals for being successful in their businesses, why should their input be any more influential or demand any more consideration than any other citizen of Sheboygan, which incidentally, most of these business leaders are not? As a city employee and a taxpayer, I too wish to see the city run at its highest level of efficiency and combine services when appropriate. But those issues have little to do with where the new police department should be built. And any questions about the ability to share services at the Sheridan Park site have already been addressed. To pay for another study, even if funded by private dollars, seems a waste. And what, what of the study when it's completed? Who's to say that the results are any more valid than the city's study? Is the city's own study to be disregarded then? Who decides what if any of the study's findings are worthy of implementing? The city? The business leaders? And if the city doesn't choose to implement them, will the business leaders push for more studies or bully our elected officials with threats of opposing re-election campaigns? Now in fairness to this group of businessmen and women, I have heard that they may have been misquoted in the Sheboygan Press. The front page press article of December 11th and its recent editorial yesterday imply that the group's primary focus is the opposition to the Sheridan Park site. However, in a recent letter to the mayor and the council, Michael Muth, a member of this group, states unequivocally, quote, let us be perfectly clear, our group is not about site selection. Our focus is shared services, end of quote. Now either this group has ulterior motives which considering the integrity of its members is unlikely, or once again, the press has chosen to show its bias and spin fact into propaganda to further its own agenda. The press alleges that somehow the mayor was not open and forthright with the information discussed at meetings leading up to the decision, excuse me, the selection of Sheridan Park. But were not all these meetings open to the public? Where is the, is the press's responsibility to attend and report on these meetings? Finally, yesterday's editorial charges that Mayor Schramm, that quote, Mayor Schramm and the council should listen to the business people just as they should have listened to the citizens group a month ago, months ago, end of quote. What about listening to all the citizens in favor of building at Sheridan Park that have written letters and spoken before this council? What about listening to the experts who the city, with taxpayer money, hired to study all the alternatives and ultimately recommended the park? And what about the chief and the men and women of his department, the true experts on the needs of our law enforcement community? What about their voice? Ironically, the press editorial makes my point. It stated, quote, aldermen are the decision makers, the representatives of the people, end of quotes. Exactly. You have listened to all these groups. You have carefully considered the alternatives, weighed good and bad, and have made your decision. It's time that we all respect that decision and move forward with this, with this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Tom Zizinski, please. Tom, could you give me your home address? Sure, 2404 Silverleaf Lane. And you will have five minutes. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, thank you for allowing me to speak. And I'm here to speak in support of the Police Department being built at Sheridan Park. I want to discuss the process and the local media, specifically the failure of the Sheboygan Press to fairly present the issue. We do have a representative form of government, and I would venture to say that the paper's reporters very seldom are present at discussions that take place at the committee level. This is where most of the action takes place in government, and we saw that in its decision to build a police facility at Sheridan Park. Upwards of 80 meetings over two and a half years 
show that the council did its work. The public should be informed of these meetings and what, what is going on and what is going to be discussed, not just what's going to be voted on during the committee of the whole or a regular council session. The mayor and some members of the common council have always recognized the need for a new police facility and they, excuse me, my glasses here, <clears throat> and they continue to do what's best for the city. The mayor has had a vision to address other issues around the city, such as continued development of the Harbor Center area, stormwater flooding issues, expansion of commercial and industrial areas, development of Blue Harbor. These could not have been done all at once due to uh, budgetary constraints. Perhaps previous administrations should have made the police facility a, prior a priority and we would not be having these discussions now. Reporting on the part of the press that its decision is flawed or that the people haven't been heard is ludicrous and serves no purpose except to give traction to candidates running for office in April. I believe alternative sites were discussed at these 80 meetings that the press failed to inform on. Now it's time to go forward in hiring the architect and eventual construction of a police facility at Sheridan Park. Thanks for your time. Oh, and Mayor, by the way, uh, last, last week, my wife heard a rumor that I was running for mayor. I just want to let you know that no, I'm not a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> and lastly, we have John Winter. <clears throat> John, could you give me a home address, please? Sure, 2213 Broadway Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor, Council, my theme is the same, the selection of Sheridan Park. Much has been said about the site of the new location over the many months and all the, all the uh, surveys and studying that has been done. Some are saying that the North 23rd Street site is best suited because it is centrally located and has easy access to I-43 and also 14th Street. Well, just to set the record straight, I-43 is not in the city, therefore it's not part of the plan. Uh, the police department does not patrol I-43, nor do we use it. As far as 14th Street is concerned, Sheridan Park is on 14th Street, so I don't believe you can get any closer to that as, as building on, on uh, Sheridan Park. Um, as far as uh, what I said about uh, North 23rd Street being centrally located, I often wonder if uh, some people ever took the time to look at a map. I brought a map with me. I think most of you understand what the city looks like, but, uh, and of course with this last uh, newspaper article uh, talk, talking about the uh, site being centrally located, certainly implied that Mr. Muth was the one who said that. It appears now that perhaps he has not said that, and maybe the uh, press was putting their own spin on it. So anyways, just for a little education on the, on the city here, basically the city is a north-south city as it's laid out. It's approximately 6.8 miles long from north to south, and at its widest point, at its widest point, it's about uh, 3.1 miles. Now, if you look here on the red dot, this red dot represents Sheridan Park. The other red dot, the other red dot, uh, oh, I guess I got to stay close here. The other red dot represents North 23rd Street Station. Now, there are four other green dots on here, which represent locations that police officers go to most often on a daily basis during their tour of duty. Those locations are City Hall. This location here would be the Sheriff's Department, which also houses a juvenile and female detention center, as well as the courthouse. Over here is the DPW service building, which is where we gas up our squad cars. And down here in the, in the industrial park is the, um, is the adult male detention center. These are locations that we frequent on, on a daily basis. All four of these locations are closer to the Sheridan Park site than they are to the North 23rd Street site. In addition, I picked two arbitrary sites, and being that this is a north-south city, I thought what better fits than North High and South High. So I located North High and South High. And, this, and South High, of course, is closer to the Sheridan site, and North High is closer to the North 23rd Street site. However, the difference between the two of them is only one-tenth of a mile, so it's very close. In my view, having the police station in the heart of the city is very important. I think that the site is more visible to the public. It also is part of the city. It becomes part of the community at this location. The North 23rd Street site is on a side street and basically stuck in the middle of a field next to a shed. It certainly doesn't give the impression that it's part of the city nor part of the community. With regards to shared services, 
uh, much has been pointed out about the, uh, about the location and shared services. The feeling is that if we don't build on county land that we can't share services. That's not true. As the chief pointed out, there are many services that are already shared by the city and the county. He did forget some, however. My own job in the community policing unit. I knew you were Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, on no, I'm on numerous uh, committees where, we have, where I'm part of other departments as well as other uh, agencies as well within the county. So we do share services on several committees as well. Last point is responsibility. Recent comments made uh, about uh, questioning the decisions of city councils in the press. They feel that council does not listen to the wishes because a vocal minority did not get their way with regard to the police site. Yet they, yet they demand that the council be fiscally responsible. They can't have it both ways. By putting the police department on 23rd Street's site, it has been said that it will cost more, and that's not fiscally responsible. Plus, any delays could end up costing the city millions of dollars in lawsuits. How is that, you ask? It's because of the safety and liability concerns that are in the police department right now. Many of you took the time to tour the police department, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now is the time. We have, to, we have to build a police department. We can't be waiting any longer, and relocating should be done as quickly as possible without any more delays. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. That's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. 181 through 1824. Alderman Warner, consent. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted. All resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. We have a motion before us that all ROs be accepted and filed. All RCs be accepted and adopted. Resolutions and ordinances be put upon their passage under discussion. This is 181 through 1824. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. My buzzer is not working. I would just like to speak on uh, document 18-7. Okay. I, I don't want a separate vote or anything. This is a document that came into public protection and safety from our December 6th council meeting. And it was a communication from Charlene Dickey of 1649 North 27th Place stating that because of her affiliation with the Friends of Sheboygan Park, she felt uncomfortable and intimidated by an off-duty police officer. While well, we had uh, Ms. Dickey and off-duty police officer at the time was Officer Edson, whom you heard speak here tonight at our public protection and safety meeting, and we had a good discussion on that, and the committee felt that it was important that they provide something to go along with uh, Officer Edson's record because this is something that could have a negative impact on his service record and we wanted to make sure that it did not do so. So what I did is I typed up a letter over the weekend and this evening at the meeting I asked the members of the committee if they would read it and if they'd agree, we would just like to turn this into the city clerk's, but I'd like to read it first so she can include it with her record or give it to uh, Ed, goes with it, with Eric's uh, record. So if I can read this to you, uh, Dear Mayor Schramm, on December 15, 2004, the Public Protection and Safety Committee discussed and took action on council document number 790405, a communication from Charlene Dickey, alleging concerns with Officer Eric Edson of the Sheboygan Police Department. This communication, submitted to the Common Council by Alder Person Montemayor, was referred to our committee at the December 6th meeting of the Common Council. In being submitted to the Common Council, this document became a public record, and as such, has the potential to adversely impact the service record of Officer Edson without a proper hearing. The committee had a thorough discussion on the communication with Ms. Dickey and Officer Edson present at our meeting. It is the finding and belief of the Committee on Public Protection and Safety that the issue has been resolved and that there was not any improper behavior on the part of Officer Eric Edson. The committee would ask that in the future any such allegations or concerns regarding city employees be handled through the proper channels to protect the reputation and well-being of city employees. We would ask that all the persons presented with such concerns by the public follow the proper channels to resolve such issues. This can be done by contacting the Human Resources Director or the appropriate department head. We ask that this letter be included with any documentation regarding the above issue as a matter of record. Thank you, Alderman Warner.
All right, if there's Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. I wasn't gonna speak to 18.7, but I, I think I feel an obligation to do so, uh, particularly because uh, Ms. Dickey called me and talked to me a little bit about what, was, what had happened at the committee, and she, she wanted me to convey to the council that, uh, not the council, I, I'm sorry, the uh, public protection and safety that uh, she had made, she had been made to feel very uncomfortable, um, almost to the point where some people felt that she had lied, and she just wanted me to assure the council that uh, all she had conveyed was her feelings, her impressions, and so forth. Uh, with respect to Alderman Warner saying that uh, perhaps the department head should be uh, should be uh, refer, uh, talked to, uh, she also indicated that she had talked to Chief Kirk about the uh, situation before she even talked or even thought about writing a letter and that nothing had, had resulted from that. Um, also with respect to any process that's involved, I think that the chair is pretty much in control of the committee meetings. I recall a communication from an individual uh, calling me a liar and uh, landing at the Bill and Use Committee, which uh, Alderman Warner chairs, and uh, he recommended that uh, it be not even discussed and be forwarded to another committee. Uh, I think at this point, if it was inappropriate to discuss this issue, which may have been, then the chair should have properly referred it to the appropriate committee and not discuss it at the meeting. The reason that uh, letter was discussed is because the chair allowed it to happen, and I think that needs to be made clear to the people uh, to the committee members, to the council, that uh, the chair has an enormous amount of control over what happens during the committee. And in this case, if the uh, letter was discussed publicly, it's because the chair allowed it. Hang on, guys. Uh, Chief, would you like to respond to that? There's some comment made that she spoke to you and nothing happened. I certainly would. Um, I stand here tonight and to let you know that I've talked to a city clerk, Sue Richards, when this first was put on the agenda. I spoke of it to the mayor. I found it wrong that a possible internal matter was not sent to us uh, to be investigated. Now, Mr. Mrs. Dickey is absolutely correct. I did talk to her on the phone about this incident. I begged her to come to our department to file a complaint if, in fact, she thought that was necessary. I stand here tonight and I hold my officers, and I'll let you know, I hold my officers accountable for their behavior. I investigate each and every incident that's reported to our department, and we make sure it's documented to make sure that if someone has a question, that we have a record that it has been looked into. Mrs. Dickey chose not to come to my department to file an internal investigation, yet I spoke to Officer Edson about this matter, which many times I don't. First off, I told Ms. Dickey that I find it offensive that one of my officers would harass, if you wish to use that word, another citizen for speaking out. Uh, she says that I would know her if I saw her, and, and I don't know who she is. She has a right to speak against the police department if she chooses. But I'm here to tell you that we will investigate each and every case. She chose not to come to us. I yet talked to Officer Edson about this. He denied any involvement in there. He doesn't know who she was at that time. I'm not sure if he knows her now. However, I'm also here tonight to tell you that I will defend my officers, and that is the reason for the internal investigations. I will hold my officers accountable when they are wrong or do something wrong, and I will defend my officers when these allegations are not worthwhile or not brought to my attention to investigate. I would ask that if you don't understand, please, if you ever get a letter about the performance of one of my officers, you bring it to my attention or the deputy chiefs, we will get back to you as the author of that complaint or concern to let you know what happened. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Berg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to the attorney and see if we could set up a committee at a whole meeting sometime in January to cover certain documents that uh, people want to bring in, Alderman, that, that we can ask him what, what we should take to the floor or what should go to different department heads. You know, that they can, they can uh, clear up the situation. 
Alderman Segal. I guess the reason we know have to know about the chain of command and what to do concerning these situations. Here's Officer Edson sitting again, um, having this all aired out in the public, and it's really our councilman's fault that this is taking place because we didn't know the proper procedures to follow so that <coughs> Chief Kirk could have taken care of it and this would never have been having to be inflated as it is today. So again, I personally will apologize to Officer Edson for having to have him go through something like this. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I oh, thank you. And the committee did apologize in, in the committee. Each, each committee member did apologize <coughs> for Officer Edson for having him go through that. And we also had a good discussion with Ms. Dickey. Uh, Ms. Dickey, you know, uh, she did feel uncomfortable. And, and as I said to her, uh, I felt sorry that she felt that way. I, was so, I felt sorry for her for feeling uncomfortable. And, and uh, <coughs> Officer Edson did apologize to her if, <coughs> if his presence made her feel that way at that meeting. A couple of things. When a document is referred to your committee, you have to deal with in committee. It was sent to your committee. This should have been dealt with in a different way from day one. It never should have gotten to the committee level. We handled it, I believe, well in committee. Each side got to speak to what their issues were. Uh, I think the committee did its job. We just felt that the nature of this uh, should be brought forward so it doesn't happen again to someone else and uh, let the council know what's going on. I think we did the right thing. Thank you. <coughs> okay. 18-1 through 18-24. Would you call the roll, please? Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Laux. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1825 through 28 to be referred. 1829 will lie over. 1830 through 36 to be referred. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull documents 1831 and 1833, and I'm requesting that they be filed instead of um, going to the Committee of Public Protection and Safety. We have a motion and a second before us, under discussion. Alderman Serta. I just question the intent of these documents and I would just like to have um, Attorney Steve McLean just to comment if indeed filing these documents not going through the same scenario which we just had last week in Public Protection and Safety, what your thoughts are. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Alderman. So I, I don't see it as a really a legal issue. I, I think it, it's. Uh, uh, I I do believe the both police department, fire departments, aware of the letter. I think they got copies of it, and are looking into uh, their aspects of it. Uh, and also, uh, I think police departments checking out the safety of the building and the uh, the codes and so forth. So. Uh, you know, whether you send it to committee or not, I don't know that it, it's going to make any difference. Uh, I think it will be addressed by the, both departments. Uh, it's not really, uh, you know, it's an issue that uh, an out-of-town resident brings concerning, uh, you know, a, a lodging facility in the city and uh, the response by the two departments. Uh, if the council and the committee wants to look into that further in committee, I think you could, but I don't know that it's necessary. Alderman Montmayor. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I see both of these um, communications are written, Dear Mr. Schramm, Dear Mr. Schramm. So how did they get to the council? You thought we should look at them? They were submitted to the city clerk as a communication coming in to the council. And they were signed. OK, even though it was addressed to you. They were, all, they were also sent to each department head that's responsible. That department right now is working with these people to clear up the incident. Thank you. You're welcome. Alderman Warner. I thank you, and, and I guess since this was going to public protection and safety, I, I would agree with filing these documents. I think it's a good idea. The reason is, is this is a private business, and really we can't tell a private business how to treat its patrons. And uh, our issues that are being taken care of in our departments are fine, but. It's really not a city issue if a, if a customer feels they were not treated fairly by a local business 
unless it was something that broke the law. And I think we'd find that out with our inspections. And in this case, if you read these, apparently it was just dissatisfied customers. Well, what's the city it has nothing to do with that, so. Thank you, Mayor. Once again, I'm a little concerned uh, with the process here. We keep talking about a, pro about a process on one end, and on the other end, we, we want to eliminate a process. Uh, the process being the referral of communications <coughs> to uh, particular committees. And again, I, I apologize, Alderman Warner, but I must say again that uh, I, I believe you were uh, saying to me one time that we need to let the process work and we should refer every communication regardless of what it says about an individual. In that case, it was a letter drafted against me uh, stating pretty much bare opinion about how they felt about how I voted. And I, I thought that that kind of letter should be filed on the council floor. You uh, adamantly objected to it and, and uh, requested that everything be followed through a process. Uh, and here again, we, one time we want a process, the other time we don't. I guess when it's convenient, we might write the convenient uh, policy. Uh, that's what we need to do. It, uh, it's, getting, it's getting a little bit out of hand uh, where we, we are starting to file communications on the council floor. If we're going to do it for one, let's do it for all. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Aaron. Just to make one point clear, it's a lot different when a, something comes in about a member of the council or something uh, that has to do with the city. But these, these are complaints about a business and, and its practices of, of serving its customers. It really has nothing to do with the city. It's pretty clear. Alderman Groff. Thank yeah, you. I'm, I can agree with filing these two documents. Uh, based on 1833, which is by Judu Patel of the Grand Hotel, they refunded the, the dollars that um, these people p paid for their room and um, explained to them their situation and their policy. And it seems there was fault on both sides, if you want to want to put it that way. And but right now it looks like hopefully everything is settled and um, these people will not hold that against the city as far as coming back here in the future. Correct. Policy always been if, if a document comes in and it's signed that you. You let the council see that document. Whether you want to file it or not, it's up to this council. But the department heads are taking care of it. Chief Zayer did her heads in the process of contacting uh, the people in Milwaukee to speak to them about this issue. So it is being taken care of that way. Correct, Chief? Okay. And, and thank you, and I just thought perhaps a nice letter to the customers from the city mayor's office might be appropriate. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to second before us to file 1831 and 1833. If there's no other discussion, all in favor of the filing? Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carried. Okay, rest of the documents. Take a roll call soon. We did those already. We did that already. That's right. All right, 1837 by by Alderman Groff regarding gathering additional information on shared services. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that that resolution hey, be Hang on just a moment, sir. Pardon me? 1832 being referred. Okay, that's fine. Public works. Okay, all of them draw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that that resolution um, regarding the gathering of additional information on shared, shared services be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Could, who seconded it, please, Marilyn? Under discussion, Alderman Bird. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. On this uh, document here, it says that. Uh, we're going to give our support to their findings. We have no findings yet, so I think this is a little bit premature. Once they have made their study and come in with some findings, then I think a document should come in and then we should take a vote on that. This is a little bit premature. Any other discussion? Alderman Groff? You know, I'm, I'll try and answer that. Um, I think it was written that way because um, if you recall the letter that we all received from the, from the Friends of Sheboygan, um, that was in there also. They, um, they're hoping that you will accept this as, a, as an informational tool to use in the future to, to make some decisions as far as shared services go. 
Um, and that's the way it was written like that. If um, the council so feels that they would like to strike that, um, uh, an amendment could be made at, at this particular time, but I, I think it's got to stay in there knowing, giving the, the friends uh, the information that yes, we will indeed look at this. We aren't just going to put it on the shelf and we're going to examine it to see is it feasible or isn't it. Thank you. Alderman Reinflech? Uh, I think actually that Alderman may change the intent of the resolution, although the, the author uh, just spoke on that. Uh, I certainly support the independent study and I would urge that all the departments that are involved work with the group if they wish to do the independent study. Uh, but I do agree with uh, Alderman Berg. The last statement says this study will show what is best for the city of Sheboygan community now and in the future. I think it's for us to decide after the, the document uh, the study has been done uh, to look at the information and decide ourselves as elected officials, as representatives of our constituents, what is best. And just whatever the study comes back, we can use as a tool to decide what is best, but not necessarily now, therefore, be it resolved, the study will show what is best. That I cannot support, but I do urge the group to uh, continue with the uh, research and uh, the whatever solutions come forward. I look forward to looking at myself. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. Uh, as I read this, a lot of concerns did come to mind for myself as well. A, a lot of the verbiage, uh, I at first was going to start striking out words and rewriting it to something that I could at least look at. and and say that I could maybe agree to, but I, I don't think, I think that would be premature. Uh, I'd like to say that I, I have no problem with the interested parties wishing to fund an independent study, study regarding shared services. In fact, I welcome that because it'll save us money, the taxpayers and the city. I would also likely be supportive of some of the findings should they prove to save taxpayer dollars and provide adequate or improved services. Uh, I guess, you know, we often hear politicians in other states that we need to share services and there will be great savings. But all too often, it's just rhetoric for sound bites in the feel-good politics. To me, there are several tests that an item must pass, as I said, tax dollar savings, improved services, and finally, the real measure, which is this, is it in the best interests of the city? I will not support this resolution at this time for the obvious reason that I do not believe I can agree to accept the results of a study when I do not know what those results are. Um, how could anyone? As I say, I have no problem with them going forward, doing the study, bringing it to us. We look at that study, we'll look at it. I, I would. So. Okay, thank you. Alderman Stephan? Um, yes, I too, uh, I didn't really have a problem with the supporting the study because to me, I think that just means, you know, we're going to give it a good look when it's done. I, I did think that the last sentence could, could use some amendment, amending in my mind because hopefully it's going to show us best, but we don't know that for a fact. I think anybody who's been up here and knows me knows that I'm definitely interested in shared services. Um, fire chief could tell you him and I have had many discussions on dispatch services. And I think as this study, and I support this obviously, and I think one of the things we have to, to get out there is, is what, what the chief said, first of all, what we're doing right now in shared services, okay? And what else is possible, okay? When I talk to people on the street about shared services, they want to say, well, why do I pay for the police department and I pay for the county sheriff. The county sheriff doesn't do anything for me in the city. They say, why do I pay for the dispatchers in the county and the county and the dispatchers in the city? I shouldn't be paying for both of those. Okay, that's the things that they're looking at. And that's what, you know, I guess you look at both the, the document from the friends group and it says it's not going to add, you know, they want to look at ideas that don't increase costs to anybody. Well, I think we have to say, willing to say, well, maybe we can increase costs if it's a better thing for everybody. You know, one perfect example is the uh, police liaison officer program. You know, the finance committee came out and said last time, you know, it's fair that the school system pays half of it, but there's a few towns that don't pay the other half and the city picks up their portion. We sent them a letter to those towns asking them, just explaining it to them, how it was figured out, and now one of them sent us a check back, and this is, you know, minor dollars, obviously. So I guess We've got to get you know, buy-in from the county, buy-in from the towns to really look at this thing as a whole and say what's best if we can combine things, if we can't. But you know, that's what the people are looking for, bigger things, and maybe they can be done, maybe they can't be. I had somebody today say, well, you know, I was following the county plow and went right through Kohler on PP and it got to the city lines and it turns around and I'm paying for that plow. And it's the same, you know, that's what the people are looking for out there. And I don't know if it's the press and they're not doing you know, an adequate enough job explaining what we are doing in shared services, but I really think we need to, maybe this study will look at that. 
and say, what can we do to work with the county and the towns? Because everybody doesn't want to be a next. We've got the Walmart problem. Nobody wants to be a next. Well, why not? City taxes are higher. Well, everybody tells me this is why the city taxes are higher. Because they pay for the county's share of it and the city share of it of a lot of services. So I think hopefully this study can address some of that if there's anything we can do. If there's not, at least I'll make people aware of it. But I would like to see the last line amended. Well, Alderman Stefan, before you guys vote it down or whatever you do with it, why don't you make amendment to that last line if that's a concern? I was going to leave that up to the author, actually. Up to who, Alderman Groff? <laughs> okay, excellent. Why don't you make amendments so we can move this forward? Um, the last line of, now therefore be it resolved, where it begins, this study will show what is best for, I would move that we strike that line. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, you have a motion before you. Under discussion of the amendment. Would, would you please repeat that, Alderman Groff? That under now therefore it be resolved on the first page where it starts off, the last line is, this study will show what is best for the city of Sheboygan now and in the future. I would move that we strike that line. <clears throat> okay, now, we're speaking on an amendment, correct? There, okay, Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, seems to me that we're missing the whole point here. On the other side, if you look at it, be further resolved that the proper city officials accept and use the information from the independent study and it goes on, why would we accept and use it if we haven't seen it already? I think that should also be striked. Alderman Groff. If I may answer that. Yes. If we strike that, then what's the sense for the friends to do that, right. that study? That's I mean, it wouldn't, they want to make sure that we're going to look at this, that we're not just going to take it and, and put it up on a shelf. Okay, Alderman Serta. Thank you. I also had um, some hesitations too in the middle of the paragraph in the beginning or in the second paragraph where it ends with ultimately this study could become a municipal guideline to be used by whoever could benefit from its contents. And I'm just wondering if we have any legal, you know, legal ties to that wordage. Uh, I would say no, Alderman Serta. It's in a whereas provision. It's not the, it's not the operative uh, provisions, the resolves, uh, uh, and it's it's framed in such that it could become, you know, so it's not uh, not binding or or absolute in any way. Okay. Okay. Alderman Perez, you're next. Thank you, Mayor. I. Um, I'll support this resolution because I think it's an excellent opportunity to explore uh, the issue we have talked about for years and years and years, but doesn't quite seem to materialize and that's shared services. My question would be, uh, we have a, uh, an email, uh, Mayor, addressed to you by Mrs. Lana Stair, asking some critical key questions that involve Oh, this is on, a, hang on, this is on amendment. Oh, okay, then I'll just refer to that. Uh, this is on amendment. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, anyone else on amendment? Alderman Warner. I like must not be working. It, you know, there's so many places that I think need to be amended. I, you know, I support the idea of them bringing this study forward, going out with the study, and us coming back and considering it. But there's so many things in here where the words and verbiage just don't fit. You know, there's in that first whereas and the next whereas, there's some and there's some in the whereas after that and then the now therefore be it resolved has to have some struck out. I can't, we're going to have to bring this back in a solid piece before I'm going to support it. I just can't and I want to. I want to because I think the intent is, is honorable in this. You know, in that last one uh, where Alderman Vanderwilly had a question and it said accept and use. That's like almost saying you're going to accept it and use it. Well, no, I will consider it and review it from the independent study and discuss and work to implement those that are found to be in the best interest of the city's work. And I'd have something like that here. But so even this other amendment kind of sticks to me. I'd, I'm for doing this. I, they can go forward with their study. But all the verbiage in here is just not something I can support until we get that rewritten so that it shows them that we're going to review it and send it to our committees, the whole or whatever it is, and also 
addresses some of these things that seem to imply that we will be bound to some of these issues. Okay. We're speaking on amendment now. Alderman Montmayer. Oh, that particular sentence, not a further amendment. Right. Okay, I don't want to say anything about that particular sentence. Okay. Alderman Manny, on the amendment. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This would be a further amendment, but uh, it could alleviate um, Alderman Warner's concerns. If under the last, be it further resolved, we struck the word undertake, second line towards the end, and put in the word consider. Which paragraph is this? The last, be it resolved. Strike, second sentence, second line, the word undertake, and put in the word consider. I think that would, at least in my mind, address Alderman Warner's concerns. Wait a second. That, that has to be voted. We're still talking about the First Amendment that we got to vote on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I think we should hold this. The very last paragraph. On the back page. Back page. Sure, you said this, and now here we are. <laughs> okay. Second. You got a second? All over Manny? Second. Okay. Got it now. Who seconded that? Go. All right. We're still on amendment. Alderman Berg. <clears throat> on that last, be it further resolved, Alderman Bender really stole my thunder. <laughs> so as long as we're chopping this up so much, why don't we just file it and let them come in with a new one when they come in with their findings. Okay. Alderman Rainfly? I'm just okay. going to speak on the uh, document as a whole, not on the amendment. Okay. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I was just thinking, you know, we all have, we want to change it. We all want to change it. Would it be possible to send this committee to the whole and we all have put our two cents into it? I don't know if that's possible. Anything's possible, but we have amendment on now. Alderman Warner on amendment? On the amendment, too. Uh, there's just so many amendments there. Without having the words down, I'd like to see this document in its final form instead of crossing things out, writing in some words here, and ending up voting for something that we don't really uh, know what's there. So I think we should. I'm not going to support the amendments at this time. I will support a revised document uh, if we can put something together or or if we add these amendments and bring that document back so we can look at it again when it has all the revisions in it, I'm fine with that. Amendments. Okay. Speaking on amendments to this. All right. We have a motion and a second on an on amendment. Is there any other discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Motion carried, I believe. If I heard right, or you want to roll call on that? No. It's on amendment. On the amendment. Bonet? Aye. Serta? No. Graf? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Warner? No. Bauman? Aye. Berg? No. Eight eyes, seven no's. Motion carried. All right, now on a document is amended. Alderman Groff. Yeah, and then I'll move that the resolution as amended be put upon its passage. We have a motion, a second before us under discussion. Okay, Alderman Rentflesh. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I voted against the uh, amendment. I, I, I do think that it, it uh, makes some progress, but I do agree with Alderman Warner that uh, it's not necessarily far enough. Uh, one of my biggest concerns about this entire document is it, the tone of it makes it sound like the only reason that we don't currently have shared services is the city's fault. And I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. So we just heard an example from one department, the police department, of what shared services we do use already. Um, and the, the final be it resolves that the proper city officials accept and use the information. Well, what about the county officials? Um, it takes two parties to share. Uh, we can't share on our own. 
that way. Um, and I do ho hope that they do continue with the study. I do look fo forward to hearing some of the information. But some of the information that I want to hear is, uh, as even Alderman Stefan brought up, the city taxpayers pay for a large chunk of the county pay, uh, tax rolls and don't necessarily get those services that they see and use. Brought up the example of the sheriffs and brought up the example of the snowplow stopping at the uh, city line. But there's many, many more as well. Um, you know, one hand, we're almost half the population of the county, but we don't have half the seats on the county board. Um, uh, the tax revenues that the county gets, most of it comes from the city of Sheboygan, not necessarily the county, yet we don't really get that representation out there. Um, city taxpayers own the North 23rd site of the police station, yet we have to buy it from ourselves uh, to, to use it as a police station. I think there's a lot of examples that the shared services that we're talking a lot about, the county tends to point the finger at the city, really needs to start on the county level. Uh, and I do hope the study shows some of that, and I do we can use some of that, but I can't support this because it looks to us as if we're the roadblock to shared services, and I do believe that's not the case. Do you know disc Alderman Perez? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Now I can uh, ask my question. This letter that we have from Ms. Uh, Lana Steyer yep. addresses some key questions about uh, financial cost and uh, uh, space and so forth. And I see uh, that they're very pertinent to this resolution that is being considered right now. I don't see it has been referred to any committee. No, it was brought into the communication, and she just wanted me to share the information if I wanted to with the council. That's why I just let it, laid it on your desk today. So it's not going to get referred to? It either? can be referred. If you wanted to go to committee, it can go there, to the committee to uh, discuss it. It's up to the alderman. But I wanted to get you the information out there because I knew the vote was coming I, up tonight. I'd ask that you refer it, please, to a finance. Okay, that can be done. Hang on, we'll do that. Uh, this communication, you can have my copy, send it to finance. Okay. Okay, under discussion, Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. Again, you know, I have no problem with an independent group paying for a, stu paying for a study and bringing its findings to us. I won't support sending this through as it is with these amendments because I believe that there's more amendments that should be made to it. Uh, and, uh, and I'd like to see the document with all the verbiage right on the document instead of crossed out and, and, and things like this. And I think we could bring that back and I'd probably be supportive of that. Um, I do, however, have some real concerns with some of the players in the whole issue that, that brought this forward. And uh, that's not the friends because I understand the friends' concerns quite well. Uh, and overall, their concerns are valid, I believe. But some of the others involved had made me think deeply about their motivations. I'd like to know if some older persons were working behind the backs of the mayor and the council to subvert the open meeting process. I'd like the county to tell me who elected Adam Payne to work to subvert city government. I, I know I didn't. He's the county's administrative coordinator, not a city employee. And when I look back at the recent press articles, especially the one on December 11th, it, it bothered me. Was he working on his own time or on the taxpayer dollar to undermine the city's elected officials? That bothers me. Someone needs to find out what was going on there and I would hope the county board looks into this. I do not believe his actions were proper. The next thing is, beyond that, how can I or any one of us agree to the results of a study before we know what those results are? I certainly cannot and would hope no member of the council would. If we rewrite this document and bring it back in a form that is acceptable to us to send forward and say, yes, we will review the study when it comes in, I'm fine with that. But there's other parts of the verbiage in here that we would have to change, and we have a document that is all marked up and stripped, and we really don't understand what we're agreeing to. It should come back so we can see it and understand what we're agreeing to. They can go ahead with their study now because they're going to get the support of the council. I believe that. You know, I can't not stress enough the fact that I believe it is okay for those interested to do a study on shared services. I'd rather use their money than to use city taxpayer dollars. But when complete, they can bring those results to us. Then we can review them and work to implement those we believe are right for the city. But to just say today, okay, whatever the results, we agree. That would not be right, and I cannot support that. I say revise it, bring it back, and uh, some of the issues uh, Eric uh, mentioned regarding the county, yeah, they are a player in this too, but uh, I don't see a whole lot of input on them. We've tried to hold shared services meetings and they refused to hold them. We wanted to hold them on a library. 
No response. Nope, sorry. So, you know, it takes two to tango on this, and, and I think they should go forward with their study. But I, I think right now, I'd like to see this document come back with verbiage in it that we can read every word of it and understand what it means instead of things crossed out. And I think that's a responsible thing to do. Two weeks, it'll be back here. January 3rd. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Just want to note clearly, in my mind, all we're saying as a final resolve is that we will consider the report. There's nothing mandatory in it. We maintain our responsibility. One more time, Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. Perhaps we should be sending this committee to get rewritten and brought back on January 3rd. I, and I would so move. Second. What committee? Uh, shared Services Committee or uh, the Strategic Fiscal Plan. I would, I would expect Strategic Fiscal Plan would be a good candidate. So I move to forward this document to Strategic Fiscal Plan. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. I would ask, this goes to Strategic Fiscal Plan that you have the friends with you when you draft this document, if you're going to redraft it, that you understand everything and have them with you in that committee for their input in this document. I believe Alderman Groff is chairman of that committee. Alderman Groff, is that all right? All right. I can um, you know, I request that they be there. I think it's very important because we did bring this document forward and it's showing good faith of shared services, which we've been asking. So. Right. Alderman Renflesh. I guess I would ask for it to be referred to the Committee on Shared Services, which the county is part of as well. It's a, jo a joint committee, is that correct? Correct. Okay, I guess I would ask for it to be referred there to see if the county is willing to, in good faith, also pursue this path as well. Okay, hang on. Alderman Berg. Well, if it goes to strategic fiscal planning and they're going to have friends there, invite. County. Invite the county boys over. And if they Joint show, meeting. fine and dandy. If not, shows again. Joint meeting, would that be all right? Acceptable? If it's a joint meeting, it would be acceptable. I think the committee format would give them an actual voice that could go on record versus just a uh, interested public party that would actually be on that committee. So I'd ask that would be a joint committee meeting. Okay. Very good. Alderman Warner? Uh, Your Honor, if it goes to to a strategic fiscal plan, before we give it to the county, we should probably have it rewritten. And I think if we did that in there, and then we got together with the county on a shared service thing, or they can come to that meeting and help us rewrite it, but. That's uh, what I was hoping, a so joint meeting. We need to get a document that has everything in it that is wanted in there, okay. if it's. We have a motion to send this to strategic fiscal plan, along with inviting county and the friends to be there to rewrite this document under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. <laughs> 1830. Whoa. Alderman Montemere? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we're not voting on the resolution that was presented right, and seconded? Being referred. It's being referred. Four. Four. Sending it to strategic? For strategic. You want a roll call on that? Alderman Perez. Would Alderman like roll Perez call. wants a roll call on that? On the referral. Okay. Alderman Perez? Sure. Okay, uh, this, is a, this, this is a roll call for referral to strategic. A joint meeting, right. Um, Serta? Aye. Graf? No. Laux? Aye. Manny? Montemayor? No. Perez? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Eleven eyes, four no's. Motion carried. Okay. Now, Alderman Stefan. Um, I believe I need suspension of the rules for document 1838. I would ask for yeah, let's read the document. By Alderman Stefan repealing resolution 450405 and approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease of the redevelopment authority land in the South Pier <laughs> District to Doyle's property of Sheboygan LLC. You want to take both 1839 also? 
If I could, I need suspension on both. Yeah, and that would be for the ground lease for the triple play real estate. So we have a motion, motion and a second before us for suspension of the rules. Is there any objections of suspension of the rules? Any objections? Hearing none, proceed. Uh, both of these documents, Your Honor, are uh, continuations of uh, tenants that are going to build stuff at the South Pier District. I don't know if you have any questions. Paulette is here. She could answer them, or the individuals are here also. Yeah. Otherwise, I would make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. Move to second the resolution that both of them be put upon their passage. Under discussion, Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to mention also these two are ground leases for Doyle Properties and Triple Play Real Estate, and they're in a South Pier District project. I think that both of these are going to result in increased development and contribute to the success of the South Pier District. I think that's important. I think this is more solid evidence of a bright future for Sheboygan's Riverfront and Lakefront. Yes. I agree. There's another discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Graf? Aye. Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez, Rinfleisch, Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you for coming in. 1840 by Alderman Graf, Ryan Fleschenberg, authorizing the city to enter into a contract for obtaining medical stop loss insurance. Alderman Graf. Yeah, no, I believe I need suspension on this. We have a motion before us for suspension. Is there any objections to suspension? Hearing none. Your Honor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Just under discussion, why we asked for a suspension, we're acting on this tonight. As there are several people that um, would like to take advantage of this, uh, and this is. Um, an area that's basically a win-win for um, both the city and the employees, um, whereas the city wins because we, we will no longer have to, um, will be required to pay um, the FICA tax on, on this particular uh, investment that is made in this program. And the um, employee wins because um, they're able to save um, these funds and use them after. Hold it, Jim. Ed's motion. Stop loss, 1840. This is a stop loss. Oh, did, oh, excuse me. Okay. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Never mind. Okay. Ignore you want to explain? Does someone want to explain the stop loss? <laughs> Richard Ed can. <laughs> Alderman Vanderwill, did you have a question before you? I just wanted to explain why okay. the stop loss. Here you go, Rich. Uh, this is an annual policy that we have as our layer of insurance for our health benefits. Uh, we're self-insured for the first dollars of all claims up to the first $100,000 for each individual. And then the stop loss kicks in at that point on a specific stop loss policy. And so this, this is an annual policy, so the uh, effective date is, is January 1st. So we want to get it in place here now, and so we, we have coverage for January 1st before we have any other event. Okay. This is with Zurich again, the uh, <laughs> same uh, policy uh, coverage that we, we've had in the past, similar parameters to the past. Uh, the cost has increased about 35%. That's part of what we have seen in, as a trend in, in health uh, cost. Okay. Is there a little discussion? Will you call the roll, please? Laux? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1841 and 42 will lie over. 1843 through 45 to be referred, Alderman Warner. I thank you, I just wanted a, a brief on 1845. I had emailed Steve thinking that uh, perhaps this should be dealt with tonight. 
because it uh, deals with our joint powers agreement with uh, Sheboygan County and the city of Sheboygan for 9-11 systems. And after talking to Sue, this is something we've always done after the first year, so probably can go to committee. But I guess I would just like to make sure with uh, Chief Kirk and Chief Zyre that this isn't going to be something, if this gets passed by us in January, that would impact our uh, joint powers agreement negatively, which is what this is for. Because we won't deal with this until January in committee. Yeah, so I, I Chief Zyre. We've done this before, I think, at that time, but I just felt we should be positive. I think it's been a well, well standing, well, well accepted uh, agreement on both parts. It's, it's essential. I don't believe there's any problems that I would expect from the county sheriff's department or our side. So I think it would be okay. Okay. And again, my concern was is that it technically expires at the end of December, and it's an agreement, and that as long as we continue on, we're fine. So. Thank you. 1846 by Public Works recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Rosenthal Industries Inc. stating that they wish to put the purchasing wish to put the purchasing of the Sheboygan Marina on hold for immediate future and concentrate on a potential sale of the 128 slips on the river. Alderman Bowman. I thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and adopt the report of committee. Moved in second to accept and adopt the report of committee under discussion. Well, thank you again. Um, the reason that we'd like to uh, file this, of course, is uh, several. I have three items here that I'd like to uh, just let the council and the rest of the public know. Selling the riverfronts slips is not in our best interest due to the grants that we've been given by the federal and state governments. If in the event we would like to sell these properties, we would end up having to repay these grants back to the states and the federal governments. Leasing these slips is actually one of the profitable things that the city does do, um, believe it or not. And the third item, of course, is that it's uh, in the best interest of the city to retain the slips and continue as we've been doing in the past. There's no other discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. 1847 by law and licensing recommending de denying taxi cab drivers license 6627 based on a failure to reveal the applicant's full criminal record in his habitual criminality. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Thank you, committee. I'd like to request to see if Steve Broder is present. Steve Broder, please note that Steve Broder is not present. Okay. And under discussion, um, this is a document that we had seen referring to license 6627 for Steve Broder for taxi cab driver's license. Um, it was unanimously voted on by the committee to deny the license, and this is due to 27 um, convictions over eight years. He failed to report all but one. Um, that's four felonies, and the last felony was in 2004. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, if we have no other discussion, roll call, please. Yeah. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Laux. And Manny, aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 1848 by finance recommending adopting the Vantage Care Retirement Health Savings Program from non representative city employees. All of them across. I believe I need suspension, Your Honor. We have a mo motion and a second for suspension. Is there any objections? Hearing none, proceed. And Your Honor, move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us that the RC be accepted and adopted. The resolution be put upon this passage. Then, Your Honor, um, at this time I, I need to make an amendment on the um, section that's re I, I entitled Retirement Health Savings Adoption Agreement, which is connected to the resolution. Okay. On page uh, 12, the agreement starts off on page 11, the second page of the agreement is 12. 
under Section 6, Contribution Sources and Amounts, under A, Mandatory Contributions, the section that says Definition of Earnings, that should read Gross Earnings as a Definition of Earnings, and I would make that in the form of a motion. Second. We have amendment, a motion to amend in a second. Is there any discussion <clears> on <throat> amendment? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All in draw? Then, Your Honor, as amended, I'd move that the um, RC and the um, RC be accepted and adopted, the resolution be put upon its passage, and right. that the um, correction be made then in the agreement. We have a motion and a second before us. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Renfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vander